Welcome to Tool Talk, episode 13. This is the official podcast for Joan Art Tools. Today we have me, Ed Serbona, Senior Director of Engineering, and Wayne Bunce, National Sales Director for North America for Joan Art Tools. Today our special guest is Blake Ermos. Blake is the founder of Low Voltage Nation. Let me tell you a little bit about Blake. Blake specializes in structured cabling access control and information security. He started Low Voltage Nation as a way to connect with technicians and business owners through Instagram and a podcast. His passion is digital marketing, technology, and photography. Look him up if you're in Nashville and want to connect and see the city. He'll help you out. Blake, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. Good to meet you, Wayne. Nice to meet you, too. Excellent. Um, so today, we thought we'd spend a little time um, just talking about uh, cable pulling and some of the basics of getting cable from point A to point B and some of the tools um, associated with that. So with that, um, my first question to you would be, I know today, and it has been for a while, um, Cable manufacturers now are putting some of the cables in little reels in, and in boxes. Does the cable uh, caddy still a viable use, and how do you see it being used? Yeah, for sure. The cable caddy, yeah, the, uh, some, some of the, uh, the, the Cat 6, I got a bunch of Cat 6A shielded from Superior Essex, and then uh, it comes on a spool. So, yeah, with the cable caddies are, are definitely... Um, uh, still used in the field, uh, but I actually have a box of Cat Six, and that has like the spool inside it. I know, like Windy City Wire and Spirit because they 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 yeah. do that, so it makes it a lot easier to pull it with the spool inside the actual box. Right, but the cable caddy still has a uh, a lot of use. I know guys will get the cable. Sometimes they get it instead of in the box. They get it just like shrink wrap bundles and stuff like that, and then they'll take that and throw it on there. Or they'll throw it on a spool and then throw it on the caddy. But once you start pulling, other tools that we have that uh, can help out. So we have our um, cable pulleys. Why don't you guys tell us how you see those being used and why somebody will want to be using our cable pulleys? I'll let you go first, Wayne. So... Um, well, I'm going to go back to the cable caddies real quick, and then we can talk about it. Yeah, so um, in my former life, I used to pull wire, and uh, we didn't have cable caddies. We liked to use pipes, and we did a lot of new construction, and we were constantly nailing uh, pipes up everywhere, and it, it was a real – it was a mess, basically, to say. So the, the fact that – I don't know if a lot of people – still don't know about cable caddies on it just depends on where they are in their life and they've been into a, a store that has them but cable caddy can just um speed up the the whole process of installing cables because you just drag your cable from room to room on this on the cable caddy so it like I said it's just a big time saver so but as far as cable pulleys go we didn't have cable pulleys we used uh, a person where a cable pulley can actually replace that person. <laughs> so instead of having someone feed your wire, especially um, whenever you have a directional change where you're going into a a hole up up in a header, or if you're just pulling up into a ceiling or whatnot, uh, you can hang a pulley there to to actually speed up the install and have a person free to do something else. So that's what I was gonna say about cable pulleys anyway. Yeah, so sometimes you don't have that extra person. I, I used to do hospital work and travel around the country. So we were spread out across the country and and there was only one person and we had to, I didn't have the pulley. I wish I had one back when I was pulling cable, but it was, uh, I've seen them used in the field and I wish I had I had those a long time ago. No, oh, that's great. Cause that is how we promote it. It's like having an extra set of hands. And and that that is the uh, the thought, and that's why we decided, you know, to to make it is that it, we just thought it complemented like the cable caddy, complemented uh, some of the other products that we actually have, um, and it make and it besides making the job easier, it gives the person the ability besides uh, besides 
the extra set of hands, you're less going up and down the ladder and things like that. So it's all about time saving and making you more efficient. So with that, um, as you pull the cables, okay, cables tend to get, especially when you're doing larger bundles, they get all twisted up, not necessarily knotted up, but when you're getting down, especially down into uh, the network room or wherever you're bringing these cables, you want a, a, it to look good. You want to look professional. Uh, I've seen cables just all bundled together, so disorganized that cables that should be on the bottom are going up to the top of the rack and vice versa. And I know you guys have seen this as well. Matter of fact, Truthfully, uh, had we had this earlier when we moved uh, to this new building, we would have had our guy use it in our, in our network room. So why don't you just describe how this, the advantage of having a cable comb and, and some of the things this very simple device can do um, and what it'll do for the person using it. Yeah, organization is, is critical. When there's hundreds of drops, they need to be labeled, they need to be organized. And not only does it look good it, it, when it's managed and dressed properly, but it, it's very functional. So I, I've used the, uh, the Panduit uh, puck before. And then there's a way to actually just map it out where you have the number. You know, you can write down on a piece of paper, you say, hey, this is the number, which cable goes into which hole. So it lands in that patch panel exactly so it looks looks perfect, basically. So. I, I didn't use one of these when I was in the field. And then I, once I started going on Instagram and looking at people that were doing really good work, really good cable management, I, I was like, how do they do this? Some people do it with their hands and they're really good at just doing with hands, but this thing speeds it up quite a bit. I know you guys make a pretty good one uh, for different, different size cables, uh, but the cable comb is a, a, a very useful tool for keeping it organized. Oh, definitely. Wayne, any thoughts? Yeah, so you said something interesting. Um, Mark in your cables. I can tell you 60 70 percent of the people out there seeing whenever I came around, nothing was ever marked. How do you recommend marking cables? Do you write on the cable? Are you printing the label on the, and attaching it? Like, what's your advice as far as marking cables? So it actually is there five years from now. Is there, is there a practice out there that you think is better than others? Initially, when you're doing your pre-wire and pulling it, a Sharpie works fine. Um, I prefer to actually la labeling the cables with an actual cable wrap. Uh, so you, you have that. So when you use one of these more advanced industrial label printers, you can have the cable wraps, the patch panels, everything prints out all at once, and it's stored in a database. So you have not only do you have all of the drops and all the wall plates and the patch panels and the cable wraps, but you also have like your certification data from some of your certifiers like a fluke or a softing so having like all that consolidated into one and actually labeling it as you go uh, is, is very effective okay yeah so we do have two cable combs and ed can show well, and I'll, talk about the I'll, different I'll, cable combs yeah i'll hold them up for the camera but i'll also describe them so these cable combs are think of it as a hub in the center with a bunch of slots coming out from the center and you're able to put your cable in here and as Blake was saying so you'd be able to put specific cables into specific slots okay then there's a ring that goes around it and you simply slide it in and then you pull and what it'll do is it'll comb out the, the weave that you tend to get when you're pulling uh, the cable. And then you can either cable tie them, Velcro them, strap them together so that they're now sectioned off, creating this nice cable management where the proper cables that are going on the upper rack go there. And they're all uniform and the ones going lower are there as well. So it... It's just an easy way to make your job look professional. So that's the cable cones. So, so my question, because we're talking about wire insulation, blow rods versus fish tapes versus magnet poles and cable pullers and 
telescoping poles. <laughs> uh, there's so many different tools out there. Uh, Blake, do you have any uh, comments on what you like to use versus other? Because like I said, pulling cable is an art. It's not a science. Um, you just can't stick a fish tape in a wall and pop out the other side. So it, there's a lot of stuff that goes involved. You have to know, my, like one of the things that helped me, I think, is I actually knew how a house was built. So I know where the fire blocks are and like the headers and the, the, the corner blocks are. So that kind of stuff. But just what's your opinion on this kind of stuff? Because I could talk about this all day long. So Yeah, it, they all have their place. And the magnet pole is kind of like a one trick pony, but it's nice to have when you actually need it and you need to run, run it up the wall. And like, that's the only way to do it is use that magnet and then roll that thing. And then you get the cable at the end. It's nice to have. Uh, but in terms of you know, glow rods, you know, whenever, when I was doing a lot of access control and going into the drop ceiling and having to, you know, run the cable through some, some new J hooks and everything. A lot of times, uh, the glow rods were the most effective tool running through conduit, um, fish tape. So I think each, each device has its own special use case. So talk about the magnet pool for people who don't know what a magnet pool is. It's a, it's an actual magnet that you can tie to your um, pool string. Yeah. Put it, put it behind your wall, whether you're kind of drilling down and dropping it and then finding Drill, it. Roll. Drilling. Yeah. Typically drilling a hole yep. through the plate. So, the top. Um, I have such a really cool trick using the magnet pool, and I and I like to tell everyone about it whenever I meet. Um, so we have um, an outlet that you want to install in a room, and you can never seem to measure inside a room versus when you go up to your attic and you measure, and like you're always in the wrong bay. <laughs> so you, <laughs> so I, I'm sure it's happened to you. It's probably happened to a lot of people. So um, when you before you cut your outlet in this is what I like to do now is I figure out where I'm going to put my outlet and I it usually can be within a foot or two. You don't have to do it, but measure that go up and before I cut my hole, go up in the attic, measure, drill, drop the magnet, magnet down and then pull it to where I want to install it instead of guessing because the, the whole thing of sticking your, your arm in the hole and doing this, looking for your wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That we have, we have a couple of tools, but like I said, the magnet pool, is so good at that like it, it it just makes your job so much easier and i, I had a, a job where i was doing my dad and he was outside sticking a glow rod up to the, the the soffit into the attic and it kept going underneath the floor joist and yeah. he was out there yelling at me like remember you wouldn't hold a flashlight right i mean like in my <laughs> 40s my dad's out there yelling at me like i'm pushing it through don't you see it? and i i couldn't see it so i literally took a a, a a chain and threw it in the soffit and went outside with it and then pulled it to the hole with the magnet magnet pull yeah. So like it's there's just so many ways to make people's life easy with the magnet pool. Yeah, so, I, I've used the wet fan. I've used the wet noodle before. Have you used the wet noodle? Yeah. Pretty much the same yes. concept, just not as same kind. I think the magnet's I, strong. It's kind of a different yeah with the roller and all that magnet pool. Hey, I've used I've used the combination of the wet noodle and the magnet pole for pulling speaker wire in my TV room, and that that worked like a charm because the the wet noodle has the chain that the little ball chain that goes with it, which was perfect to get into the hole. And I didn't have to make a, a large hole, and I was able to drop it down in and say, "Where the hell is it?" and just use the the uh, uh, magnet, the the rolling magnet from the magnet pole and pegged it right out, take it right to the spot where I had hidden underneath the uh, baseboard so nobody could see the wires run, so, and was able to pull that off. Uh, so, yeah, they, you can use a combination. That's one of the things also, you know, you're saying how everyone has its place, but there's always a time where you can end up doing something like I did, where you're combining the two, two, two different tools together to help you achieve whatever it is you're trying to do because of whatever the circumstances are of that specific application. So our version of the wet noodle is called the magnet reaper. It works very similar to yeah. the wet noodle. So we're, we're called, trying to it's called the magna what? Retriever. Yeah. yeah. Like a golden and, retriever, but it's a magnet. Magnet, magnet. retriever. Okay. So you got a yeah. cool. Yeah, so we're, that, we're we're trying to make that an industry standard term now. So we might have to print shirts and make hats on it. <laughs> yeah, the wet noodle. Like I told somebody about it because I went into their house. They had this nice million dollar house, and they had this big fireplace, hundred inch screen TV, and the cables were 
going right down the this beautiful fireplace. I'm like, oh man, I could fix that with a wet noodle. They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that that's a big pet peeve of mine is to find the uh, the cords hanging out from under TVs. I have holes in every oh. house I've ever lived in, and it's not that hard. You just put a hole up by your TV and drop the cable down with right. the magnet pole, our magnet retriever, our fish tape, our glow rod. Exactly. Um, yeah. Speaking of glow rods, Ed, do you have our RDG nines? The why I most certainly do. So actually, right here. So I'll so show to the camera I have, for those watching. Okay. I have a love hate relationship with glow rods. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it always cracks me up. I don't just to let you know. In my personal opinion, I hate the six foot rods because they're too long and they yeah. they're. Just, but like, I love the shorter glow rods. That's why I was like, what are they? They're not quite three feet long. They're but how no, long are they, those? Eighteen inches. Uh, I think these are twenty-four inches, I believe. Yeah. So typically, when I was using uh, those, I didn't typically need to go more than nine to twelve feet. But I'm sure, like you've had other instances where you had to go longer with with uh, glow rods. But yeah, the longer they are, the harder they are to control. Yeah. To get- and that's a really good segment going into our RDT-18 telescoping pole. Um, Which, yeah, I don't, I don't have it here, but dealing with the, the glow rods, especially when you're getting past it nine feet, I mean, the advantage of that is so you, you're not playing whack-a-mole gopher guy popping up in, in and out of drop ceilings taking the cable and throwing it so you learned it the the whip it technique whipping it up and down okay, across yeah. the oh yeah uh, 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 across the grid uh, of the ceiling tiles and all that and then that's why we have that um that whisk with the light on it one so you could see and then two the whisk itself to help it skip across the uh the acoustical grid there so because you don't want to be going up and down, up and down. Remember, it's about saving time and safety. So so is it like a little attachment? I think I've seen those on the LSD glow rods. Little yeah, like we have, yeah. Yeah, we have something similar. It's a whisk, but it has a built-in light. And we actually have uh, holes in the whisk. So you could, if you want to, you had a light enough cable. You could take it, you could whip it, and take the cable and whip it with you and send it out that way. Or when you get down to where you're going, just tie the cable and pull it back. So so this way you don't have to change fi- uh, fittings or anything like that at the end. So That's always been yeah. my biggest issue when I do drop ceilings is you can't see because all the light is below you. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So when you're on the top of the grid, so the 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 new camera that we we have, um, Ed, you can introduce the new camera. We have a new wireless oh. camera that will actually attach. To, oh, it will go to glow rods. You can attach it onto glow rods, put it on our telescoping poles, and it has a light and LED, and it'll go to your your phone. Mm. I'll only I can only show the case because the camera is not here. It's being sweet. Uh, the, it is? Did I not see it the first time? Oh, son of a gun, I didn't. Okay. But you can't see the camera. Yeah, well, the age is setting in, so. <laughs> okay, so here's a little case for it. Here's the camera. Okay, and basically, it's a Wi-Fi camera. It's its own hotspot. You're going to link it up to your phone. We have an app for it. Um, all this will be coming out in the next couple of months. Um, And you'll be able to put this in a wall or put it above that drop ceiling. Let's say you can't see far enough down where you need to go. You could put it right, screws right onto your glow rod. And you could just send it down there. And it has built-in lighting, so it'll light up. And you'll be able to see what's going on down there. So, I mean, that's just one application. Put it up in the wall. You're not sure there's a... Uh, fire break or anything in it you can put it in the wall take a look you're not sure if you're going to drill into plumbing or drill into electrical wire put it into the wall and matter of fact story the guy that invented this created it because he he was uh he had his own electrical contracting company and he was doing work in a big apartment building 
and couldn't see what was behind the wall and drilled right into a water main and flooded a floor of the building. So he said, you know, I got to learn from my mistake, and he created that camera. So. What what's the range on that? Do you know? It's it's Wi Fi to your phone. Yeah, right? so it's about thirty to fifty feet. Depends 30. on the environment. Yeah. So, so you can well, also... we have done it. We have done it fifty feet in here. So if you got uh, no noise or you know anything like that, anything that's going to interfere, you can get some decent distance out of it. So so like one end <laughs> will hook to your glow rod or your telescoping pole. And then you, we have an attachment where you can actually put a C hook on the end. Yeah. So you can actually watch what you're doing and grab the wire and pull it back to you. Right. Yeah. So like, um, I just think it's great for like, I done trailer work where I have to call any trailers. Uh, no more. Just drop the cable and take the pole, pull it back to me. So yeah, I mean, it has a lot of uses. But yeah, if you, mean, if you don't want to get into a crawl space. Or you yeah. can't fit into a crawl space. <laughs> I would say that I used to be able to fit, but yeah, I don't like going in crawl spaces personally. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like bugs and like rodents and like exactly of... <laughs> snakes. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a safety issue too. It's not only just like oh, I don't want to touch that. It's like they'll bite you and like it'll be a black widow spider. You know. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I mean, just another uh, point here. I use that. My wife was complaining uh, the dryer wasn't working well. And I had a hunch what it was. I used that to inspect uh, the vent, you know, coming out of the house because it's actually a fairly long run. And sure enough, I had two two birds nests in yeah, in exactly. the dryer, vent, which is you know it's common. And I, that's why I kind of knew what it was, but it allowed me to go in and see exactly where it was. So, And like Wayne said, it comes with a sea hook. I actually use the sea hook to just grab and pull out the bird's nest. I've done that. I've used it with our telescoping pole to inspect my gutters. Is it time to clean them out yet or not yeah. without having to go up on a ladder? So Yeah, or, just, or your ch chimney. It's good for the chimney as well. A good for a chimney as well. There's just endless uses, you know, for anything you got to go look at that is kind of hidden or, you know, too small. Dry. Everybody's done this or guys that have worked on it or people, I should say, people, whoever, have worked on cars. How many times have you dropped a bolt? Where did that bolt go? Went down, <laughs> yeah, right. down there. Where is down there? Okay. Yeah. You, you got that to, to go and peg it right out. As a matter of fact, it even has a little magnet that can, can yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of the hook, you can put the <clears throat> mag on, just retrieve that bolt. Yeah. What, one of my biggest fears is dropping my keys in like a sewer grate. <laughs> <laughs> this... <laughs> Fear fears no more. This thing solves that problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So, that's great. You know, I we, like that. We we're we're uh, running out of time, but I'll 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 uh, I just was going to talk about our wall box templates and that type of stuff. Um, Blake, have you used any? Uh, yes, he has. Oh, the, I love it. Indeed, He's got the, the WTL thirty-four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, a big, that's like a four, it's a four gang, <laughs> I think. Three, three, three and four. Three and four gang. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was always the the big um, no no on a job for us is crooked outlets and crooked wall Ooh. plates and screws oh, going in the wrong direction and everything's. Uh, I'm fine with it either up or down, but you can't have up and down and sideways on your screws. But yeah, the uh, whole thing about using wall box templates to actually level out your outlets. Um, it's amazing we go to trade shows and guys are like, I need one for every one of my guys that works for me. None of them know how to do anything straight. And and I get it. Like, um, you're you're rushing, you're in a hurry. Um, but we do have these uh, devices actually help you um, draw your lines perfectly um, perpendicular and horizontal, so your uh, wall plates are straight. And then on top of that, yes, we have the um, um, the EBC hole cutters so you can actually draw your outlet and then use our hole cutter with an oscillating saw and mm -hmm. instead of using a jab saw or drywall saw where you can grab an electrical wire while you're going back and forth this thing will just vibrate and cut your holes in perfectly um mm, okay i've never used i've seen those i've always just used the drywall saw yeah oh, they're right. not any are they uh neater they're faster right yeah 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 because yeah, you're cutting the, the whole hole at the same time gotcha. question for you blake 
when you're cutting out those holes or you guy that sits there with his drill and drills every corner and then uses i'm the guy that's like ketchup bottle exactly <laughs> yeah okay uh, i just kind of wiggle I, I, I can wiggle it and just i don't know okay i, I don't know I, I don't know that i have the patience for that so <laughs> my, right, that's it. My when home, you do like two hundred of those a day, the it starts yeah, yeah, to hurt. It, it starts to hurt. All right, that, we need to put a rubber an argument from me on that. That's my sure. whole saw is bent. It's like that because every time I do that, like you, you bend it. So like my whole yeah. saw actually has a. It's it's, it's a almost rubber. like a seesaw. Yeah, it's uh it's shaped in the C, the in a slight C, and the tip's broken off. So I do the same thing. But like I said, you I didn't have. Oh, I used the. I use the wall, the, the EBC wall. The, um, uh, yeah. What there is the go. official name? It's the electric wall box cutter. That's why we call it the EBC. But yeah, right. we have single and double gangs. And uh, like I said, the part number, if somebody wants to look it up, it's an EBC uh, Echo Bravo Charlie 400. Um, you hook it up to your oscillating saw and it vibrates. The other thing, too, it's not as messy um, when you use the EBC. So if you're in someone's house and you're not clean up after yourself, which I think most people do. But if you're not, um, you're leaving a little bit of dust, not a big hunk of dust. So, yeah. so we can we can end. But let, let's talk. Um, do you do any training? Are you like, like what do you like? What do you recommend? Because like I love going out. I go to trade shows. I go out to visits and I talk to people and show stuff. And like it's just that's how I'm wired. But I I'm a big believer in trade training like mm -hmm. i think people should actually go get the proper training and get certified so do you have any one you want to plug or talk about so we're we're doing fiber optics right now uh it's been a big okay. focus um it's it's with fiber wizards so fiber wizards is kind of like a separate company but it's associated with low voltage nation uh we want to apply the same um learning module kind of format and learning management system that we're using with fiber wizards to uh, copper uh, low voltage um, training uh, program. Uh, we don't curr currently have one. Uh, we just kind of focused on the fiber right now. Um, right. But that's kind of the future. And I know you guys, yeah. that's how I got connected with Jonard was yeah. through the fiber strippers. They, they're like, hey, that's my favorite fiber strippers. And then I got the mid span right. kit and everything. So yeah, I got uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's great. It, yeah. So we, yeah. We fiber for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of yeah. And that's what, uh, last and, week and, I went. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say you, you were with uh, Jerry at the the training session, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I sent him all all the tools for that session. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We got great relationships with you know with Jerry, yeah, Fiber Wizards, Jonard, all that. Yeah. Exactly. No, it's great being uh, like a group of us together. I, I really enjoy it because. We have people that we can reach out to when we're not sure. You know, sometimes we get questions. You know, I, I, don't, I just don't have the answer for. I've never been asked that question. I don't have the, the outside experience. I know the design of the product, but I might not know an application. So I'll, I'll call Jerry up. Hey, Jerry, you, you know, I'm running into this. What should I tell the person? Eh, usually he's great. He's got the answer right there. Yeah, so. he's on the board with FOA. He's a master instructor. And then yeah. on the copper side, we have all the Dixie people in Low Voltage Nation. You know, there's right. Lee Renfro. He's on the board as well. So uh, we've, got, we've got a good Chuck group. Is, of, Chuck as well? Yeah, Chuck. Chuck's really yeah. good at training. Uh, also works yeah. for Leviton, but he has his own thing. Let's Talk Cabling. So, yeah, he uh, – yeah. We we got we got a lot of great people that do a lot of that have ten you know ten year plus uh, doing trainings. Awesome, yeah. I like said everyone get trained. Makes your job that, that, easier. That's yeah. what I say. Everybody. But, so here, here's the thing. I, I got my CFOT, my certified fiber optic technician uh, credential last week, but it doesn't mean you're ready to go in the field and like pretend like you know everything. <laughs> it'll no. it'll make you not useless on day one, and that's it. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. And, and, yeah. and it'll make you not useless on day one, and you're a whole lot less likely to stick yourself with fiber on the first day. Okay, those yes. are the things you because that that I guarantee is drilled in. There Jerry is no big on safety. Big he on was down. yelling at people to put on their glasses for sure. Yeah, put, you put on your glasses. You put on gloves when you have scraps. 
you're, you're putting them in a, in a scrap jar. If you don't have that, you, you, you use electrical tape. You use uh, masking tape or, or scotch tape to yep. pick it up per, because once it's stuck on there, then just fold that tape in half and, you know, they, you're not going to get stuck by it. The whole thing is safety, wear protection, keep your area clean. Exactly. Keep your area clean. Yep. Because if you're not picking up those scraps, you're not going to see. You know what you're going to do? Put your hand on it. Put your elbow, your arm on it. Uh, uh, get your it finger right. on it. Yep. Yeah. And, and worst case is get it in your eye. It'll be that, stuck that, in your eye for weeks. It takes forever to, to get out. Yeah, so. It's called I, a fester. I, uh, it festers to, out. Yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> Truly, I'd be at the hospital having that thing pulled out. I could, there's no way I could deal with that. Yeah, it's a it's a mindset shift from copper to fiber because the, the copper we're just like throwing stuff everywhere. You know, it's yeah. kind of it's it's a little more like messy uh, in some cases. So fiber definitely forces you to be safe and and clean. You really have to have a different mindset. You can't. You got to. Think and be aware, and just just be aware. Keep your place neat. No, know when you're dealing with fiber scraps, any scrap you create, get rid of it. Because here's the other thing: it's not just you. You leave that behind. You're potentially leaving it for someone else to get. Oh, yeah, it's everybody on, so. for sure. Yeah. All right, so. With that, why don't you want to button it up because yeah. I don't want to go on all day. No, no, no. Um, if Blake wants to share his contact information with anyone. Uh, sure. Go, yeah. yeah, go ahead. and. Yeah, uh, lowvoltagenation.com is the central hub. We're on social networks, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. So low and YouTube. Uh, we're doing a lot more YouTube stuff. But lowvoltagenation.com at the very top is all the social channels, and we have a blog and everything there. So lowvoltagenation.com all right excellent thanks, yeah, blake. thanks for joining us today blake yeah yeah appreciate so it. Thank you. so with this i'm gonna sign us off now we hope this podcast has been informative again we'd like to thank blake ermos founder of low voltage nation for joining us today we really enjoyed the discussion today and i hope you can join us again in the future thank you everyone